I played football because I love playing football. I wanted to play exciting football. I wanted it to be skillful, even maybe artistic at times, creative. Um, but also you wanted to win as well. Um, and winning trophies is one thing, but success can be a lot of things. I mean, for the sex, success of the Rovers, we're getting in the playoffs three years in a row to get to the Premier League. Considering the size of the club and considering the, the money uh, that other clubs around us had, that's massive success. That's amazing success. Um, and don't take anything away from the success that is playing in front of a bunch of people who think, this is brilliant. <laughs> we really like this. This is really exciting. This is why we want, love football, because it's exciting football a lot of the time. So when I get asked about it, there's a number of things I say. I say I was certainly playing among my best, if not my best football in my career, for the first two or three years at Cranmere. Um Wrote lots of reasons for it. You know, I was at the peak of my powers. Um, I certainly was playing the style of team that suited me. Um, I was under a manager who allowed me to be as creative as if I liked and basically said, like, go and do it. You know, as opposed to, before that, Everton was very prescriptive. You you know, I could go and watch an Everton game to, I mean, a year after I left and I could close my eyes and then open them 10 seconds later, look at the ball and I could tell what every player would be from that because they were so prescriptive. And that's fine, that's one way of doing it. It's not really certain me, <laughs> brilliantly. So there was a real joy of it. Um, you also have to add on the joy of the people around. And to be fair, back when I was writing uh, The Accidental Footballer, there was a tip, a suggestion from the publishers. They said, well, why don't you just throw the Tramme and the Kelly and the Motherwell bits in at the end? I went, you have no idea how much fun there was. You have no idea, because they didn't know. Um, how much, how many interesting characters there were. And of course, I would became PFA chairman during that, which led to its own adventures. Um, so no, I was I was never going to do that. But I was never going to take away from those four years there at Tramia. Whereas they were as important as the years at Chelsea. Absolutely for me, 100%. Not even holding back for a second. And people out with the game are People in other echelons of the game will go, yeah, really? You're just saying that to be right on? No, I'm afraid not. For me, they were absolutely equally important. And hence, and I think I proved that now by making sure the book, but I, there actually is more written about Tranmere than there was written about Chelsea in my books. Now, there absolutely is more pages on it. So um, that's not to say that I've, I mean, I love Chelsea, my team there and had great times there and still, Still go to the club quite a bit. Um, but my time at Tramia, quite clearly. And you see the passion when I write about it in this book. And I really just wanted to give the Tramia fans this. I really wanted to say, right, you, you'll know some of this. You'll know the outside of it, right? But here's the really daft bits inside. Here's the really mad bits inside. You know some of the Kingy stories, but here's, here's what really happened with them. And to be honest, even your writer, uh, I always underline, I write my own stuff, so if it's rubbish, don't blame any ghostwriter. It was me, sadly. Um, if we, we can, I, I just thought it was important that you think, well, wait a minute, he's such a character. I know there's plenty more, but I want to write him correctly. I, I want to draw him, I want to paint him, I want you to be kind of in the room with him, you know? Um, so I tried to do that with the writing, but even more, or just as much, I, I read the audible version of my book. And that's even more fun because you can do a wee bit of vocal <laughs> stuff as well. Um, so yeah, I was so excited. So people, the amount of other authors are saying, like, oh, was that second book hard? And I'm going, no, it was great. <laughs> You've got the characters. If you're a writer, you always worry about characterization and narrative and storyline and all that sort of stuff, right? I've got the characters sitting there. <laughs> all I need to do is be good enough to write about and explain what they're like. The real difficulty was giving them enough colour. You know, like somebody like, uh, I was writing and I did a lot of stuff about Vickers and uh, Higgins because they were a brilliant duo. I mean, really funny, really surreal. Always Mickey taking, but nicely, you know, in a way you really bite but really kind, but very, very funny. I had to take a lot of the stories out because basically they're too much. <laughs> so... <laughs> And I kind of put them down, a lot of them down to one or two. And particularly one story with Higgy, one or two stories with Higgy, where it just, you, you almost, again, it's one of those things where the publishers, 
they send it through and the editor looks at it and then he's a couple of notes as they send them back saying, are you sure this really happened? <laughs> well, we had you, that's usually what was said. Yes, it was. And I loved, I love strange characters, I love big characters, and it's just great to write about them. 